Hello and welcome to this trove video on Namibia. We'll be looking at onshore Namibia with particular reference to the Kavango Basin activity by Recon Africa. Recon Africa have been quite active in this basin over the last couple of years, so we'll be giving a summary of their activities, particularly in Namibia where their wells have been drilled. We'll then give a brief overview on the petroleum potential based principally on the information given in their website followed by some comments on their well results. As usual, the information presented in this video is based on the Southern Africa Trove database. So where are the licenses held by Recon Africa? Well, the first is in Northeast Namibia, which is PEL 73, and adjacent to it is PEL 1 in Northwest Botswana. Both these licenses are close to the world famous Okavango Delta. Recon Africa currently holds 90% equity in PEL 73, with Namcor holding the remaining 10%, which is carried. However, Recon Africa have agreed to take 50% of Namcor's carried interest, and this deal is currently ongoing. In the event of a commercial success, a 25-year production license would follow. Recon Africa also hold 100% equity in the Botswana license PEL 1. The Recon Africa license covers much of the so-called Kavango Basin, which is located at the eastern margin of the previously drilled large Awambo Basin. The Kavango Basin appears to be on trend with the Karoo succession and the underlying Otavi and Muldon group carbonates exposed to the southwest. However, this rock succession is buried beneath the Cretaceous to recent sediments of the Kalahari group over the Kavango Basin. An east-west cross-section illustrates the relationship between the Awambo and the Kavango Basins and shows a number of previously drilled wells. The Awambo Basin is dominated by a late Precambrian to early Paleozoic succession, but it appears that the late Paleozoic to Mesozoic Karoo succession extends over the Awambo Basin, shown here in yellow, above a significant unconformity. The Kawe 6-2 well is shown schematically here, and if the Kavango Basin is defined by the Karoo succession distribution, it could be argued that the Recon Africa wells are not in fact the first wells to be drilled in the Kavango Basin. It is worth noting that the Tosha wells penetrated the lower Awambo group Black Shale, which is believed to have some source potential, and may be present under the Kavango Basin Karoo succession. Recon Africa's stated strategy was to target conventional hydrocarbon plays in the Karoo Permian Basin, although this has shifted to include a Paleozoic full belt play. Uh, more on that later. Uh, based on high resolution error magnetic data, they drilled two wells in 2021, Kawe 62 and Mbambi 61, which they defined as stratigraphic tests. Unfortunately, both wells appear to be dry holes. Two phases of seismic were then acquired in 2021 and 2022, totaling about 1,250 kilometres, and this was used to map out further leads and prospects. A multi-well drilling campaign was planned for 2022, which to date has resulted in the Macandina 8-2 well. This was presented as an 800 million barrel prospect, but sadly, this appears to be a dry hole too. Further seismic was acquired in late 2022, which brings the total 2D acquisition to 2,755 kilometres. The last major activity was the acquisition of a high-resolution gravity survey over PEL 73, which was completed in May 2023 and brings a total coverage to 5,000 square kilometres. We understand that the next well, 5.2, is currently in preparation, and this will be another well to watch to see how its results are reported. This slide summarises the stratigraphy of the Kavango Basin. It's not clear whether it is a regional column or built solely from the Recon Africa well results. However, it seems clear that the wells 6-2 encountered an upper clastic interval that Recon Africa have dated as Karoo, as well as an underlying carbonate interval dated as Lower Paleozoic, Muldon and Otavi groups. It seems that source rock presence has not yet been reliably demonstrated in the Kavango Basin, but it is inferred from the poor oil shows in the Recon Africa Well 62 and from the offset Etosha wells in the Owambo Basin to the west. Here, the Otavi group black shales have been encountered 
and believed to have some source potential. Regionally, the Karoo Echo Group contain organic rich shales, but it is not clear if these were encountered in the Recon Africa wells. A final point, Recon Africa have interpreted over 9,000 metres of Kavango Basin fill from the Precambrian to recent sediments. This map shows an interpreted Permian paleogeography. It's from the Recon Africa website and we presume is included to strengthen the evidence for a Permian aged source rock. The map shows a restricted deep marine basin extending northwards from the Republic of South Africa, where Permian source rocks are proven in the White Hills formation, northwards into Botswana and northeast Namibia. There's no scale on this map, but the extrapolation distance from South Africa is large. This map shows the distribution of plays across the Recon Africa area of interest. In green is the Kavango Rift Basin, which is interpreted to contain the Karoo aged rift succession. The structural trend appears to be northwest to southeast and comprises a number of rift related structures. To the southwest, in purple, is the adjacent Damara Fold Belt, which is interpreted to consist of an older succession and exhibits clear evidence of compressional deformation. I have another line a bit later to show this. Recon Africa recognised three play groups. The primary play is an intra graben play targeting a Karoo Rift fill succession, this pale green colour here. There are two secondary plays. One is an intra rift fault block play, shown in darker green, and this is presumably targeting pre rift or early Karoo Rift fill reservoirs. The second secondary play is targeting fault related fold structures within the Damara fold belt. This play has not yet been drilled and therefore no play elements, e.g. source, rock or effective reservoir, have been demonstrated. This 2D line through the Kawe 62 and Makandina 82 wells illustrates the structure of the Kavango Rift Basin. It's hard to properly assess the Recon Africa interpretation with all the colour fill added, but it appears to show a number of fault highs such as here, here and here separated by grabens here and here. The basement ornamentation is clearly not geological and perhaps has been added to represent some basement fabric. In addition to these structural highs, there is evidence of basinal onlap plays, such as here, that may, if marine, contain deep marine turbidite reservoirs. We'll return to this slide later when discussing well results. This 3D display of the filtered full tensile gravity data does appear to support the interpretation of the Kavango Rift Basin as comprising a number of northwest to southeast trending structural highs, here for instance and here, separated by these grabens. The superimposed 2D line shows the location of the Kawe 6-2 well on one of these structural highs and the Makandina 8-2 well on a less prominent intragraben high. This seismic line illustrates the structural style of the Damara Fold Belt, which is adjacent to the Kavango Karoo Rift Basin. It clearly shows a compressional structural style and has been interpreted as a series of hanging wall anticlines, for instance here and here, sitting above thrust ramps here and here, and linking down to a basal detachment. There is also some evidence of back thrusting, for instance here. The map shows the location of this line and also the mapped trend of these anticlines, which appears to be more north, northwest to south, southeast, and is cut by the later Karoo Rift trend. Obviously, this is an interesting play, but it's a high risk one as it is untested. Reservoirs are interpreted to be pre Karoo, down here, uh, the Mulden and Otavi stratigraphy, and are of questionable quality given both their age and the low porosity as encountered in the 6-2 well. Source rock is yet to be demonstrated. Some limited well results have been made available on the Recon Africa website, which are worthy of some comment. We believe the Kavango sedimentary basin was first identified from magnetic and gravity data, and the first well, Kawe 62, was sighted on a structural high interpreted from the high resolution aeromagnetic data, presumably supported with the gravity data. The upper map shows the lower resolution magnetic data and the PEL 73 area of interest. And the lower map shows the high resolution aeromagnetic data and confirms the same features as seen in the original magnetic data. 
The Bouguer gravity data shows the location of the first three wells, which appear to be on the flanks of an area of negative anomaly. Interestingly, this gravity data doesn't appear to mirror the full tensor gravity data, which has a clear northwest to southeast trend, although this may be a resolution issue. So what do we know so far? Well, Recon Africa believe that the first two wells drilled in Pell 73 have established a significant Kavango Karoo Rift Basin, and this seems reasonable. Their Phase 1 seismic then identified the Damara Fold Belt fairway, which also seems reasonable. Thus, three play groups have been identified based on the well and seismic data. Their primary play is the Graben Trend Karoo Sin Rift play, which is light oil prone in their view. A secondary play it comprises a Sin and Early Rift Intra Graben Fault Block play, which they also believe is light oil prone. And then the other secondary play is the Damara Fold Belt, which they believe is gas or gas condensate prone. They believe that the lower Karoo interval is currently in the light oil window within the Kavango Basin, but no vitronite reflectance data or other maturity data has been made available by Recon Africa yet. They also believe that there are six reservoir and four source rock intervals so far discovered in the first of the Kavango sub-basins. But again, no source rock data has been made available by Recon Africa. It should be pointed out that we don't know the results of the 6-1 or 8-2 wells. Based on their first phase seismic data interpretation, Recon Africa have mapped five drillable prospects and 18 leads. Turning our attention to the well results, this 2D seismic line, which I showed earlier, illustrates the Kawe 62 and Makandina 82 targets. Both drilled relative structural highs, and from the ornamentation here and here, both encountered pre-rift carbonates. The yellow colour fill shows sandstones within the overlying Sinrift Eka formation. Now their occurrence just over the highs seems a little unlikely given the tramline character of the seismic, but not impossible. And I'm thinking here of the Alba field in the North Sea. Recon Africa interpret the Karoo to be in the main oil window in the Grabens down here, but the well failures suggest a problem of charge, source rock presence, maturity or timing, seal presence or trap geometry. At this time it is not possible to say which is the cause of failure. However, Karoo Classic Reservoir has been demonstrated. Two contractor reports for Kawe 62 have been made available on the Recon Africa website. The first is from Horizon Well Logging Incorporated and describes the shows encountered in the well. In summary, only poor to trace oil shows were encountered, mainly as weak cut fluorescence, and only trace amounts of C2 and C3 were seen. The complete lack of C4, both I and NC4, is not what you'd expect if there were significant movable oil saturations, especially in a water-based mud system, which we believe this to have been. The second report is by Netherlands Sewell and Associates and summarises their petrophysical analysis. In summary, three Karoo Sinrift classic reservoirs were encountered with good porosities but were 100% water bearing. Two pre rift carbonates were also encountered, termed the 1350 and 1900 levels, and appear to have water saturations of 56 and 61% respectively. However, these results seem ambiguous given a the lack of significant shows in the well, and b, the low porosities encountered, less than 10%. Depending on the formation water salinity, large errors of SW can occur in low porosity zones if the formation water is relatively fresh, which at this point in time we don't know. It is noteworthy that Netherlands Sewell and Associates have a disclaimer in their report suggesting what seems likely that the shows are residual. Viceroy research have been critical of the petrophysical analysis by Netherlands Sewell and Associates and believe their oil saturation calculation to be erroneous. They point out that despite the calculated oil saturations, the core oil saturation, these green dots here, is virtually zero and that the deep resistivity profile over here is both lower than the adjacent carbonates and doesn't have a profile typical of an oil column. This is an extract from the Netherlands Sewell Associates report and tabulates the reservoir properties. As you can observe, the classic intervals analysed 
interestingly not referred to as Karoo, have respectable porosities but are effectively 100% water bearing, these three intervals here. For the two carbonate intervals here, note the low porosities and the low cutoffs used to, in order to retain these intervals as a net reservoir. In terms of resource potential, there are no published updated reserves available for the Kavango Basin prospects, but some numbers have been released on the Recon Africa website for the relatively new Damara Fold Belt play, and these are shown here. The unrisked gross resource of 14.5 TCF seems high, but the chance of success, less than 10%, seems reasonable for what is a high risk play. So where are we now and what next? Well, the hydrocarbon shows in well 6.2 appear real, but are in effect poor or very poor in quality. And the CPI analysis of well 6.2, which indicates movable oil, doesn't appear consistent with the mudlogging report unless the oil is effectively residual. I had read that the lower Karoo, Eka and Dwika source rocks were not encountered in the Kawa 6.2 well, either through erosion, non-deposition or condensation. If true, then the Lower Karoo source rocks are not proven in this well. It would be good to get that verified. So without drilling success to date, the PEL 73 and PEL 1 project remains high risk. Viceroy Research are damning of the Recon Africa presentation of the well 62 results, and they describe the carbonate zone interpretation as a major misrepresentation of the drill results. In fact, a shareholder of Recon Africa, a Catherine Bowles, has filed a lawsuit against the company in the Supreme Court of British Columbia, claiming that it misled her and other shareholders with overly optimistic and misleading disclosures about its operations in Namibia. Clearly, it would be of great interest to see how that plays out. So, what next? Well, likely forward program is that they will continue to work up leads and prospects, including an additional nine prospects and 12 leads in the newly identified Damara Fold Belt play. They will continue with their drilling campaign. The first Damara well is due to spud fourth quarter this year, and I think that's the 5-2 well I mentioned earlier. Recon Africa have just received environmental approval to drill an additional 12 exploration and appraiser wells to unrestricted depths before July 2026. So plenty of activity. Clearly this is a campaign to follow both in the courtroom and at the well site and we will be reporting back as and when more news becomes available. So thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it please like it and consider subscribing too.